Hello again, I'm doing a bit of work on a motorbike today because um, waiting for bits to arrive for the car, so I've got to do a bit on the car on the bike. Um, it's a Suzuki AK50, which is the model after the AP. So it's very similar, but it's got footrests instead of pedals. And it's six volt, and it's got a really, really dim front light. <clears throat> so I've got a LED replacement that I'm going to fit in. Hope that will help. But also I've got to check the air filter because apparently when these came from the factory, they were restricted to 30 miles an hour. And what they did was they put a smaller, um, I think it's in here. I think they made it smaller so not so much air could get through. So I'll have a look at that and see. I would have thought 40 years later, it's been done at some stage. I mean, it goes all right. You can get 40 out of it, no problem. But I seem to remember I had one when I was 16 and I'm sure I used to get 50 out of it. So I'll have a look anyway and see. Mind you, I've put in a few pounds since those days. All right, let's get the light bulb off. All right, I've pulled the um, front light out and it's been glued in with like a silicon the Volv has, which isn't a problem, we can pull it out. And things like that, I'm not fussed about because I don't know if, hang on, I'm changing the subject again. I think this has been glued on as well, the lens. Um, so I will pull it out and re-glue it back in. I'll have a quick go at getting the lens off because then I can just pull it from the front. Um, yeah, there's a there's a little block connector that the blue one was going to, which is that one. Um, and I can just basically connect the other ones up. And it's uh, it, it's sort of what I would have had when I was 16. That, that's what I'm trying to recreate. I didn't have a mint AP. I, I had a 50 pound one which had a paper round and I saved up really hard to, to buy. I always wanted an AP 50. It's the only bike I wanted. It's the first bike I ever rode. My cousin had one and I had a go on his and that's all I wanted um, until I saw the AK. And it was just like the AP, but without the pedals. And I just, I, I really, and the ones I saw were faster because they were probably lighter and newer, but they were faster than the AP. So I, that's all I wanted was an AK. So now I've, in fact, my AP looked like an AK, apart from, yeah, it had the front shocks as well. Because the AP had, like, um, coloured, um, shrap, shrap, well, they were like tubes over it. They just, they looked old. They looked old and dated, whereas these looked a bit more modern. So this is just what I would have wanted when I was 16. And I would have had block connectors and it wouldn't have been quite right and it wouldn't have been a mint one. So I'm more than happy with that with this this is probably much better condition than what i would have had right back to the subject of changing the bulb let me pull that off and see if that bulb is compatible all right <clears throat> i pulled that off and took the bulb out they are nothing like the same but it doesn't mean it won't work i might have to just cut this back a bit um to get it so the connectors work or solder some joints on or something Look at the difference in bulbs. That is a six volt tungsten bulb. It's only 25, 25 watt. It was shockingly bad. So we'll try this and see if that makes it any better. Right, I've taken the uh, diameter down on the bulb with the um, sanding flat disc on the grinder. So it now fits into the opening, but there's nothing to locate it. There's nothing, if I'd been clever, I could have left a couple of bits sticking out, but it would have been a bit tricky Then I could have used it as a rotation thing, but I'm just gonna bond it in. I'm gonna stick it in and stick some glue on it and worry about getting it out if, uh, if I have to in the future. Right, that's the bulb in. It's just um, friction's holding it at the moment, so I'm gonna have to do put something a hot heat mount glue gun would be ideal, but mine, mine broke the other day. So I was thinking about a grub screw or something through the side, tapping it, but it's all a bit thin. Um, I want to check that I beam is the, the I'm gonna check the bulbs right way around so high beam is high beam. Um, but that means I'll have to fire the bike up because it doesn't work on the high beam only works when the engine's running. So I think. Mind you, I could always just swap the wires over. 
I'm not fast if the wrong wires go into the wrong place to make the beam work properly. So I might just put a couple of dollops of um, silicon in there, hold it on in place. This bulb won't get hot. So and silicon's I've used it on the exhaust before and it's all right. So I might put a couple of dabs in just to hold it a bit around the bottom, and that way, if it needs to come out, it shouldn't be an issue. Because this might not work. I'm just uh, it's six volt, but I, you know I'm not I'm not an electrician or anything. I'm guessing six volts, six volts. But it all depends because it's coming off the um, engine dynamo, whatever it is. Right, let's put a couple of uh, blobs on it, let that dry off, and then uh, stick it in and see what happens. What I might do is just put a couple of blobs of solder on either side. Because this, this is how the bulb is earthed through the body of it. There's a high beam and low beam, I don't know which one's which. So if I just put a bit of um, flux on it and a bit of solder, that's not going anywhere. And if I need to take it out, I'll just heat the solder up and it will free it up. So I think that would be my best option. Right, I've put some flux, I don't know if you can see it, down both sides. Um, I've got the soldering iron heating up. I've just had to do a bit of work on the point of it because it just disappeared. Bit of solder. So I'm gonna heat this up, heat the casing, and then um, drop some solder on it. And that should all hold it together. That's my theory anyway. But I'm still gonna have to glue that into there. So, I can test it, but I won't be able to ride it until the glue sets. Well, I'll use silicon, because like that silicon, you can pull it off if you need to. All right, that's uh, not the neatest soldering, but I think that'll be fairly easy to take it back off again. And it seems quite solid in there. So, I, I mean, I'm not gonna use it that much at night time, but it, it's a bike I wanna use whenever I can. So, if I do go out, I want to be able to know that I'll be able to see that on the way back. That bolt there was diabolical. It was so dim. It was, it was my push bike had better bright lights on it. In that fact, that would have been an option is to stick a push bike light on the front and improve it. Right, I'm going to have to glue this back in there now. Hopefully it'll do something. The heat mount glue gun would have been a bonus. In fact, I want, I've got some of the actual glue sticks, I might try heating them up with the soldering iron and heat it in that way. All right, so I've used the soldering iron on the um, glue stick that's supposed to go in the glue gun. Um, yeah, not the prettiest, but it's in solid and it's not seen. So, right, let's whack this back in. At least I can try it out straight away. Right, I've taken the air box off, air filters out. I've got another one of those so I can put in. Um, that hole seems it can't get any bigger than that, but that one, that's, that can't be right. There's no way they can expect um, a lot of air coming in there. I think that's where the restriction must be. I can't believe it's still on. I'm guessing anyway, I presume. I don't know much about these. I've never, never looked into them. Um, so I, I just know they came restricted from the battery and there was... Or was there a wash in the exhaust as well, or something with the exhaust? Right, so I am going to cut that out. I'm going to take that out. I might have a Google and see if I can find a picture of a... Oh, oh that's not good. Is that rust or mud? That's mud. Right, let's investigate a bit further here. Right, that's the air box all back in, back together again, bolted on. I'm just gonna check the main jet size on the carburetor, which is in here, access through. There's a little panel on the other side like that. Um, because with the restriction on the air going in, it might have had a restriction on the fuel going in through the main jet. So I'll check that. I've got to try and find out what the standard size main jet was. I have got a an AP carb, a brand new one, so I can see what it's, Got on that, check it's the same as this, and then um, if it is, I'll take it for a spin, make sure, see how it goes now. I'm excited because it would get to 40 before in fourth gear, but as soon as you put it in fifth, it just it wouldn't it wouldn't pull anymore. 40 seemed to be the limit, fourth or fifth gear. 
So I'm guessing the gearing's okay. Um, I don't know what the standard was for the AK and what it was for the AP, but you would think being 50 years old or whatever it is, that it would have been de-restricted by now. Right, let's have a look. Right, I've just taken the carb off and um, checked the main jet size, which is 72.5, which I think from memory is right. I'll double check on that, I'll have to Google it. Um, so if that's, it should be safe then. If um, One thing I did notice, there's supposed to be a rubber bung in here, which it doesn't have. So I think there's a overflow pipe. Oh, it comes from up here. This, and they go through the rubber bung, if I remember rightly. Um, so it would have been getting air in through here because the air, air box puts air into this casing, which allows it to go into the carb via the engine casing. But because there was this open, that would have allowed air in which would have probably given it a bit of air, extra air. So the restrictor probably wasn't restricting as much as it could be. But I'm, I'm gonna block that up and then I'm gonna give it a run because I think it'll be safe with the right size jet in it and I'll see what it does. If it goes over 40, no, if it looks like it's gonna go over 40 because we've got a 40 mile an hour speed limit here, then that's a win. So let's give it a go and see what happens. Well, I'll just put some tape over the hole underneath so it should stop the air coming through right i'm on let's go for a ride right it's not starting so i've just put a bit of fuel i took the spark plug out it's looking dry so i'll put a bit of fuel down there i'll give it a go now oh. well, that's a good sign right might put a bit more down see if it'll run for a bit longer yeah, started straight away with the fuel down the bore again, but I've noticed with the fuel on, we're not getting any fuel through the filter. So I think I'll take this off and blow up here in case there's a blockage. It's an old bike. Well, even though there's quite a bit of fuel in it, and um, nothing was coming out when the fuel tap was open. So now I've put it on reserve. I'll just put a bit more down the barrel. I'll give it another go. <laughs> Yeah, it only seems to be burning what's what I put down the barrel, which doesn't make sense. I think I might have to whiz the carb off again. Right, I've undone that, which I presume is a drain screw. And even though it's on reserve, the filter's got fuel in it. Oh, uh, there's apparently nothing in the carb, so I'm going to pull it apart and have a look at the float and the um, float valve. Right, there was hardly any fuel in the float bowl. So what I've done is just, just put a pipe. So if it was blocked, it's all right now. You can see the taps leaking. So I'll put it back together again and give it a, um, another go. Now I've put it back together again with no fuel in it. The floats, um, I still can't blow get anything into the carb. So there's definitely something wrong with the float valve. Let's have another look. Right, whilst the carb was off, I thought I might as well get my new carb and put it on, but the diameter there looks slightly different, where it goes on to the, where the rotary valve is, and these are different, I mean, it doesn't look like a Yamaha, a Suzuki one. So I fiddled about with the um, valve for the float, uh, fingers crossed, it looked like fuel is making its way down there, we'll give it a shot and see, see what happens. dark at the moment but I'll leave them on check it all works all right right that's the test ride done um yeah it felt much quicker <laughs> but the speedo says 40 and I thought well, maybe there's something wrong with the speedo and it won't go past 40 so I put my Strava on and I got to 41.3 so yeah it feels feels like it's pulling better but 
it still it, it goes flat out in fourth gear to 14. You put it in fifth and it just won't move. I don't know if that's to do with my belly. Right, what I'll do now, the light stayed on. Um, it's not dark enough outside, so I'm in the garage. I'll fire it up, not for long though. And then I'll put the lights on and turn the garage light off. to tell um yeah i don't know until i use it at night time it doesn't seem to be like a beam it seems more to be light everything up um but i'll take it for a well i'll see i'll see if i i don't know i don't know if i'll take it for a spin later um yeah it's nice to nice to go for a spin it though i did enjoy it it takes back to youth um i've had a helmet i've painted it must say the same colour as the one I had when I was 16. Just need to get some Dr. Martens now. Right, well, I think that's it for this video. Um, maybe, I don't know what, uh, I think I'll have to look into the gearing and see. But it it, it, it seems to get into 40. Um, the speedo says 40, but the revs keep rising, but you don't, it doesn't go past 40. I mean, the clutch is all right and everything, but... Uh, I don't know, maybe I need to take it for a longer ride. I'd, I'd leave it for six months and then thrash the hell out of it and then leave it for six months again. But at least the fuel seems to be going through into the carb now, which is good. Um, I don't know what that was, just some sort of blockage somewhere, probably because I don't use it very often, but I do think it needs extra fuel in there as well. Right, thanks for watching.